Hello aviation enthusiasts, Sky here, and we have an interesting topic to discuss. Today we'll try to answer the age-old question. Why is aviation ruled by whites? Quack, 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 quack. We're not talking about people here, we're talking about planes. Just with a glance at an airport apron, you'll see that white and overall lighter colors are more dominant on most aircraft, going from the smaller business jets to the flagship airliners. Of course many will say that there are still many jets with other shades of colors present on that same apron, and airline liveries are like a rainbow, full of hues and patterns. Still, most of the aircraft choose the milky color, and this favoritism has a logical explanation. Let's dive into it. We'll start with the first activity that is related to the color choice of an airliner, the paint job. Although it may seem simple, painting a plane is a complex process. Most of the parts get layered with priming, color coding and some protective varnish, and there can be a lot of layers. Their number depends on the aircraft livery requirements. The paint itself isn't weightless either. Even though each layer is a fraction of a millimeter thick, the area that it covers needs to be considered too, and sometimes those areas are huge. The weight of the paint on the smaller business jets can add up to a dozens of kilograms, while the layer on a mid-range aircraft can weigh more than a hundred kilograms. And on the bigger airliners, the hundreds can add up to a ton and more. That's pretty hefty. This brings up quite a logical question. If all these layers of varnish and paint add to weight, can't we, you know, just not paint the planes? Yeah, we love everything to be pretty and shiny, but in the end of the day, the industry is commercial, and the extra ton of weight isn't helping the fly. After all, instead of paint, more passenger seats can be added, more tickets can be sold, and less fuel can be used due to the weight drop. Or on the other hand, fuel reserve can be bigger, and therefore the range will increase. Seems like not painting a plane is a win-win option. These ideas definitely make sense. For example, in the beginning of the 20th century, most planes actually weren't painted, leaving the silvery metal exposed. Even in our times, some planes are left that way. One of the most recognizable plane livery designs used to be the lack of paint on the planes of American Airlines. These silver beauties sparkled with their polished fuselages, grabbing attention with their vintage looks, which made them stand out by the side of the painted machines around them. Therefore, in addition to the previous bonuses of not having a paint job, you are also getting a winning look. It seemed as though it should be a new trend for all the airliners, but it didn't work out. This solution actually carries a cost. This naked metal faces all kinds of winds and is exposed to other elements, so it dims really quickly and can even develop corrosion. In spite of all the other benefits, these aircraft needed much more attention, maintenance and regular polishing. As a result, the company ended up spending more than it was actually saving. This is why eventually all their airliners conformed to the color pattern of the other flying birds. The aircraft livery changed from the shiny silver to the more practical light gray. In fact, this happens to most of the metal constructions that are exposed to any environment, from cars to buildings. You think that the Eiffel Tower looks the way it does due to the natural color of the metal it's built with? Nope. It gets a new layer of paint every so often. It's complicated and expensive, but without it we would be able to see this Parisian landmark only in history books. Ok, so a paint job is needed regardless. But why white? The weight of the coating can be considered first. It's not that white paint somehow weighs less than other colors, such as blue or red. The thing is that the white color is simpler, but if you need to get a good looking bright color, the layer has to be thicker, otherwise it will look dull. So if the clients want a colorful appearance for their planes, it will require more paint, more layers and will weigh more. The next point follows suit. The amount of layers correlates with the difficulty of a paint job, and therefore the cost of it. Painting an entire airliner is already a difficult task in itself, but doing it multiple times is even harder. Considering the fact that it can cost hundreds of thousands of dollars, many are keen to minimize the costs. To continue the topic of costs, the third point is simply the effect of mass production. Since white paint is so popular, there is a lot of it, which makes it cheaper and more accessible. This means that buying the paint and working with it will be easier compared to other more exotic colors, which you need to somehow obtain and find out how to layer them correctly. Finally, the lifespan also comes into play. Any paint tends to fade with time, but the darker tones have it worse than the lighter ones, and any defects are instantly noticeable. 
that leads the airlines to send their planes into surface maintenance more often, and that can take up a lot of time, from days to even a couple of weeks. These couple of weeks are detrimental, as the aircraft is stationary, without any flights and without bringing in any profits, all the while the cost of maintenance gets even higher, since the paint job is more difficult to carry out. I guess you have inhaled enough chemicals by now. Let's step outside into the fresh air and take a look at the aviation market. The white color on an aircraft is preferred on the market. This is not about the airline to consumer relationship, which in fact would prefer the more colorful schemes, but rather the relationship between the airlines. The airline doesn't fly under a single flag. It also leases the aircraft, gives them as a charter, or it can sell the aircraft on the secondary market, which is big and is important to the world of aviation. The popularity of the white color also plays a role here. Let's say you have a blue, velvet, red, sparkled jet. You are a creative carrier, that's your vision. However, your colleague who decides to rent this jet might not appreciate your creativity. And here go the alternatives. If the color scheme is simple, then it can fly just like that, or with minor changes to the livery. But if the plane looks like it belongs at some graffiti art museum, it might need to get completely repainted with the corresponding costs. So what? It all comes down to expenses, maintenance and unwillingness to bother with any of it? Not really. Aircraft operation also has its nuances. Let's play with physics first. We can see different colors because different materials reflect different fragments of the light spectrum, which end up being perceived by our eyes. White color reflects almost the entire spectrum, while black absorbs most of it. However, we're not focusing here on the optical aspect, but rather the energy. While parked in an airport at some sunlit city, a plane in a dark or black color will absorb most of the sun rays and will heat up. Although that can be countered by good air conditioning system, it will require a lot of energy. If you are at an airport that can provide you with an external energy supply, it is not such a big deal. But if not, you'll have to run an auxiliary power unit and burn fuel while you are still on the ground. Furthermore, the surface of the plane can heat up to a few dozen degrees Celsius while it is on the ground, and in flight it drops by a few dozen degrees below zero. That happens many times a day. The materials will expand when heated and contract as they cool down, and such structural fluctuations are not the best thing in terms of reliability and the lifespan. Aviators have found ways to deal with this long ago, but still, it shouldn't be played around with. Since white color reflects most of the light, it is much more appropriate from this point of view. The interior won't be cooler because of that. The plane will still heat up on the ground and cool down in flight, but the temperature fluctuations won't be as drastic. Another important but barely noticeable aspect is the safety, not in the long term but in the immediate one. White color can stain easily. Even though in other cases it may seem as a negative, it carries an important positive. During a visual checkup, any defects, damage or leaks are easily spotted on the white hull. There's also an extra tiny bonus. The main competitors of the metal birds in the sky are the real ones. As the research shows, white and overall lighter colors make the plane more visible to our feathered friends, who can quickly get out of the way. This adds to safety in the flights. Meeting a swarm of birds in the sky is an unpleasant sight, with serious implications that can lead to real accidents, which not always have a happy and heroic ending. Does this mean that we are forever doomed to fly only on white planes? Not so much. The previously explained factors are important when it comes to aircraft operation and overall economics, but it can be said that they are not all that critical. Yes, a colorful livery is more expensive and harder to maintain. Yes, a Star Wars styled airliner will be more difficult to lease or sell. Yes, a black plane will heat up more than a white one. So what? A white plane is safer? Yes, one of the hundreds of safety elements will be slightly better, but it is definitely not enough of a deal breaker to suddenly only ask for white planes and to assume that any planes of darker colors are somehow more dangerous to fly on. Aviation regulators don't set a rule on what colors are allowed or not allowed to be used to paint a jet. The military of many countries tend to paint their jets in quite grim colors, and they don't seem overly preoccupied by this fact. A colorful aircraft weighs more, not too much to make it unbearable. After all, how big of an impact will there be from an even extreme case scenario ton of paint on a 500 ton airliner? It is a more complex and expensive paint job. Well, B-52 
beauty has its costs. Paying more will produce a more visibly pleasing jet, in comparison to a flying piece of chalk. But let's leave that to the marketing of the airline. Once again, in terms of the overheating situation, I used quite a drastic example, and luckily white and black are not the only colors that exist in the light spectrum. After all, there are no real requirements to paint a plane in a single color. And here we see some creativity, with parts of the jets painted in different colors and with various images added to them, from whales to tiger faces and from Lord of the Rings to Pokemon. Aviation industry has quite strict rules and regulations, which limits the tuning. However, within the color spectrum, the airlines can let their fantasies run wild. What a colorful topic we've had today. I wish you to fly on beautiful planes and enjoy stunning views of the sky, fast flights and soft landings to you.